بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of inner and outer peace in Islam. I said that we as believers are very fortunate to have lots of uh, tools, lots of uh, facilities, sources of power, resources for peace that sometimes, you know, we take them for granted or we even maybe underestimate them. Last night we talked about it to some extent. Tonight I want to explore a few concepts. Each of them needs, a, you know, a study, but very briefly. First of all, we are all aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wali for believers. Allah waliyu alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumat ila al-nur. Walladheena kafaru awliyaahum al-taagut yukhrijunahum min al-nur ila al-dhulumat. When you study the verses about wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find that there are three groups of verses. One is that Allah is wali for all people. Yeah? Who has created people? Believers and those who don't have faith or faithless. All are under Allah's guardianship. Whether they want it, they don't want it, they understand it, they don't understand it. No one is going out of the control and out of the support and out of the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one set of the verses. The second is the one which says there is a special wilaya between Allah and mu'mineen. This is not an universal. Mu'mineen are under guardianship of Allah and those who are, uh, you know, kafir, and here meaning those who reject, who oppose, are under wilaya of their own leaders. And there are people in between that they may not have any, you know, want to support them in dunya. Uh, I always say we have two types of wilaya, but three groups of people. We have two camps, but three groups of people. Because we have camp of haq, camp of batil, and there are people who don't belong to any camp. Muzabdabin bayna dhalik. La ilaha ula wa la ilaha ula. So we shouldn't think everyone who doesn't belong to this camp is from the other camp. There are many people, sometimes majority are in between. They don't belong to any camp. So the second group says that there are some people who are under wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some who are under wilaya of ta'ud and the devil. And some, maybe we can conclude that they have no wilaya. The third group of ayat is about the fact that those who are under wilaya of ta'ud, in the hereafter, they realize that they didn't have anyone to care for them. They don't have mawla. In Ayatul Kursi, we say, you know, but this is on the surface. On the day of judgment, when everything becomes clear, hidden things become manifest, they realize that they have no mawla. Because who is your mawla? Who is your wali? Who is your guardian in this sense, in this context? The one who loves you, the one who cares for you, the one who supports you. 
In Dunya, maybe they have some support system, but there is no love in the camp of battle. Tahsabuhum jami'an wa qulubuhum shatta. When you look at them, you see they are very organized. Sometimes they are more organized than the other camp. If you look at, for example, camp of Muawiyah, great discipline. Yeah, no one was, you know, acting different from what Muawiyah wanted. Camp of Amir al Mu'minin was not that good. <laughs> yes, few people were very obedient, but there are also people who uh, were not very disciplined or obedient. On the surface, so you may see there is more organization, more discipline, but don't think they love each other. Qulubuhum shatta, their hearts are divided. Why? This is very important. Because either we have a cause which is greater than me and you, or we want to serve ourselves. If you have a cause which is greater than us, then we can be united under that common cause. But if I want to serve myself, you want to serve yourself, he wants to serve himself, then temporarily we may work together, but we are in heart serving different ends and different you know, ideals. Yeah? So we are not united. We just work together. This is why, you know, in the discussions that we have about dialogue, unity, interfaith, you know, I say the only way we can be completely united is if we are united under God. It's only God who can unite us. Yes, we can have friendship. Yeah, we can have friendship. We can have, you know, very good relation. But to reach the point of unity, and I mean by unity, means that you work for the same cause. It's only God who can unite us. And God is so great that can unite Sunni and Shia, can unite Muslims and Christians and all believers in God of Abraham. So, if we are believers in God, submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can be united. Otherwise, we are divided. But in dunya, they can serve each other. On the day of judgment, you would see that these people who were friends, they become enemies. Not because they change from friends to enemies. No, because the reality of that friendship was enmity. Yeah? If two friends help each other to, for example, you know, get poisoned. Is this friendship? Two people collaborate to make a crime. Is it a friendship? No. They think they are friends because they are enjoying you know, doing bad things together. <laughs> yeah? But it's not friendship. It's enmity. They are harming and because they are encouraging others to do bad things. Al-akhillah yawma idhin ba'dhuhum li ba'dhin aduv illa al-muttaqin. All friends become enemies except muttaqin, except those who were sincere. At least, if you don't have religious taqwa, at least you should have human taqwa. <laughs> at least operate on human virtues. Then you can remain as friends, otherwise it becomes enmity. So, people who are under vilaya of Allah, they have vali in dunya and akhirah. Those who are under vilaya of taqut, in the hereafter, Allah says, kafirina la mawla lahum. There is no one to help them. Yeah? Indeed, as I said one night, they will distance themselves from each other. Is tabarra al ladina tabi'u min al ladina tabi'u. Those who were followed will do bara'a from those who followed them. Okay. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only guardian that we can have who would be in the true sense our wali who would take us from darkness to light so either you want this support or you will remain on your own 
you remain alone without support. The full support is when we go under Allah. We subscribe to his wilaya. And he is not imposing his wilaya on anyone. He's so kind that he offers. He says, I am happy to be taking care of your affairs. But he's not imposing. Because this kind of relation is based on love. And you cannot impose this kind of relation. Yeah? I cannot force myself to be guide of someone or mentor of someone. Yeah? In the same way, Allah is not forcing us to be our guardian. Okay? So we have to subscribe. If we become mu'min and ask Allah for our support, in dunya and akhirah, he would be always with us. Look at this beautiful ayah. Surat Nahl, verse 128. And this ayah is the same ayah that Amir al Muminin mentioned at the beginning of the sermon of Hammam, you know, the Khutbat al Muttaqin. When he said, you know, please describe for me Muttaqin. Sifli al Muttaqin, hatta ka'anni anzuru ilayhim. He asked Imam al Islam, describe before Muttaqin as if I can look at them. You know, sometimes the description is so good. For example, someone has gone to a place that you have not been there. He can describe so nicely that you feel you were there. So, salam alaikum. The verse that Amir al Mu'minin started this khutbah with was this one. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ Surah Nahl, verse 128. Truly Allah is with those who have taqwa and those who do ihsan, those who are benevolent, those who are kind, those who do good things. Allah is with them. You may say, does it mean that Allah is not with the rest of the people? I say in this sense, no. Yes, in another sense, as I said, there are three sets of verses. In another sense, he is with everyone. No one is absent for him. Yeah? But this ma'iyya, to be with someone, means to be there as a guardian, as a support. For example, Prophet Musa ala Nabi Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna ma'iyya rabbi sayyahdin. My Lord is with me. This meaning of is with me, Sayyahdin, he will guide me, is not available for you know someone who is like Pharaoh or someone who doesn't want Allah's support. There are people who say, you know, Alhamdulillah, I am educated, I am clever, I have my family support, I have my government support, I have you know social security, I don't need God. We may, you know, be surprised, but unfortunately, this is a common mistake when people in their, you know, personal life they reach certain level of, you know, worldly success, or some societies when they reach certain level of development, they think they don't need religion. They think religion is for poor people, you know, for underdeveloped, you know, nations. We don't need religion. We solve everything with our systems. We have health system, we have social security system, we have security, everything. And you know, COVID proved that <laughs> this was absolutely wrong. And not only every country was vulnerable, actually sometimes more developed and more you know, uh, affluent countries, they were more vulnerable. So no matter how clever, intelligent, I don't know, uh, famous, etc., you are. We are all in need of support in this magnificent, huge, and also at the same time unpredictable world. We need support. So, this ma'iyah is for certain people. Musa alayhi salam said, Inna ma'iyah Rabbi Sayyahdin. My Lord is with me, means I am. Listening to him, I am acting according to his will, and he is going to guide me. Yeah, he has given me this task. 
Or when they said, Musa and Harun, إِنَّنَا نَخَافُ أَنْ يَفْرُطَ عَلَيْنَا أَوْ أَنْ يَتْخَى In Surah Taha. They said, if you want also the ayah number, Surah Taha, verse 46. 45 and then 46. They said, you know, we are concerned that Pharaoh, who is very, you know, stubborn and arrogant, as soon as we go and speak to him, he may, you know, يَفْرُطَ عَلَيْنَا أَوْ أَنْ يَتْقَى He may do, you know, something to stop us. He may go out of control. He may become, you know, very much, you know, inordinate and stop the mission. Allah then said in the verse 46, قَالَ لَا تَخَافَ إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى I am with you. Don't worry. I am seeing and watching. So, إِنَّ مَعِيَ رَبِّي سَيَّحْدِينَ Here, before that, years before that, Allah said, go to Fir'aun, إِنَّنِي مَعَكُمَا أَسْمَعُ وَأَرَى when the Prophet was in the cave after he left Mecca, the cave of Thor, and Thaniya Thnain is Huma Fil Ghar, the Prophet and the first Caliph, they were in the cave. Is Yaqulu Li Sahibihi La Tahzan in Allah Ma'ana. We say, Rasulullah said to the person who was with him in the cave, uh, some people say, that person said to Rasulullah, but uh, it doesn't make sense that he is saying to Prophet, you know, لا تحزن إن الله معنا. So the Prophet said, لا تحزن. Don't have grief, don't have sadness. إن الله معنا. Allah is with us. Here says, لا تخاف. So, no need for khawf, because Allah is with us. No need for huzn, because Allah is with us. And this is exactly the meaning of being wali of Allah. Inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahsan. You see how Quran is beautifully interpreting itself. Al-Quran yufassaru ba'dhu ba'dha. So, if you are awliya Allah, means you have accepted wilaya of Allah and acting under parameters of this wilaya, He is with you, He will guide you, He is supporting you, and you don't need then to worry, you don't need to have fear, you don't need to have you know, grief. So this is success. Whatever you are going, inshallah, to achieve is just success over success. Just to be acting under wilaya of Allah, this is great success. If I am a servant of Allah, do I need to achieve something else to become successful? No, I'm already successful. One of the du'as that Amir al Mumanin used to say, and we can say in sajda, is very beautiful, you know. Elahi kafa bi izzan an akuna laka abda. This is sufficient for me as a source of honor and dignity to be your servant. You know? If someone is, you know, servant of, for example, king, yeah? He's very happy, you know? They, they ask him, you know, who are you? This is a very subtle point. If you ask, Someone who is servant of the king. For example, is driver of the king, or I don't know, is the cook of the king, or, you know, private, I don't know, secretary or assistant. When you ask, who are you? If there is no political correctness or, you know, political things, when you ask him, who are you? If he loves the king and he loves his position, what would he say? He doesn't introduce himself. He doesn't say, you know, I am John, for example, you know, so and so. He says, I am... Servant of the king. Yeah? So, for a mu'min, if you ask him, who are you? He would not say, I am uh, so-and-so. He says, I am Abdullah. Yeah? 
Of course, maybe in society, sometimes we have to introduce ourselves. I mean, in, for, in our own understanding, our identity comes from what? Our identity doesn't come from ID card or from the name that father has given us or mother. Our identity comes from belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Isa alayhi salam, when he wanted to introduce himself, he didn't say, Ana Isa ibn Maria. He said, Ana Abd, Enni Abdullah. Yeah? He didn't say, Enni Isa ibn Maria. He didn't introduce himself and his mother. He said, Enni Abdullah. So, to be Abd of Allah is a great honor. Kafa bi izzanan akuna laka abda. Wa kafa bi fakhranan takuna li rabba. It's also sufficient for me as a source of honor that you are my Lord. Elahi anta kama uhib, faj'alni kama tuhib. In the whole month of Ramadan, if we can just get this from Allah, I think it's worth, you know, a lot. That Allah accepts us and gives us this honor to be his abd and he would be our rabb and master. So, to be under velaya of Allah, it means that he is with you. He will guide you. He will support you. He will hear you and see you all the time and all the challenges that you go there or through and you support. And you don't need to have khawf or hosn. When you don't have khawf and hosn means you have salam, you have peace, you have amn. Yeah? Therefore, you shouldn't worry. Inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Inshallah, we will talk. Maybe on the surface there are challenges. Maybe sometimes you get, you know, disturbed. But this is only on the surface. Like an ocean. Maybe on the surface there are some waves. Or even sometimes you may see some, you know, dirt on the surface. But deep in the ocean, there is no disturbance. It's calmness and it's, you know, serenity. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept a'mal and du'as of all mu'mineen and mu'minat in every part of the world. We accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us if he has not already forgiven us. And if he has forgiven us to help us not to go back to the sins and mistakes that we have repented from. We ask Allah to bless us with the faraj of Imam Zaman at Jalallah Ta'ala Faraj al Sharif. And in a very special, humble, and grateful way, we ask Allah for shifa for all people who are ill. There are many people who are ill, and we keep hearing uh, you know, requests for dua. So we ask Allah to give shifa to all of the ill people, inshallah, and to send lots of rahma and maqfra to marhumin, to mu'mineen and mu'minat who passed away, who are our parents, for parents, teachers, community members, neighbors, friends. May Allah send rahmah and maghfara to all of them and please them with us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam.